Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Good morning and welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Wednesday. And you know I'm always excited on Wednesday, sir, because it's a special day for me. How are you feeling this morning? Well, I want to say thank you to all the fine people who called, who texted, who uh, sent well wishes, asking me how I was doing, and uh, all those who said, oh, we'll boycott, we won't boycott. Now they're saying we, we, we said we didn't boycott, we won't boycott, and all of that. Well, that's in the old year. We're in a new year. I hope we do better. Yesterday, I sent a lovely letter to the president asking him to make Umofia better. And I've gotten a couple of reviews about it. Well, we will continue to speak truth to power. And for those who say Johnny's Bite is not sustainable, tell them that there's too much happening around. He said Bella and I discussing too much. So there's too much to talk about. And we talk about it not because we hate a certain regime. We talk about it because we want to make our situation better. Put yourself in the shoes of anybody who will go to an hospital and will be told that there are no beds. So you have to sit in a chair to get infusion. Put yourself in the shoes of somebody who lives in an area where the, the transport system around that place closes by 8 p.m. And so if they don't rush to get there by 8 p.m., they'll have to walk about three, four, five kilometers in the dark, pitch dark, to get home. Put yourself in the shoes of that child who has to sit on the floor or lie on, the belly, uh, on their bellies to access education. And even worse, they, they, when it rains, they would have to close school immediately or abruptly because the, it is not a classroom. It's schools under trees. Put yourself in the shoes of all these people. That individual who this morning wants to willingly earn, make an honest living, but cannot have access to work because he's simply jobless or she's simply jobless. Put yourself in their shoes. And they are the people we speak up for. We won't speak for the elite because the elite has no worries, really. We will speak for the, the voiceless because that is our job as journalists. And we have done that before, many, many years ago. Some of you say, oh, well, you never say anything nice about the president. Well, I'm not the president's press agency. I'm not the government's press agency. Mr. Kwame Sefakan said that a, a long time ago. The government has too many spokespersons. Yesterday I told you there's a spokesperson and there is a PRO for every ministry in this country. There are consultants. There are party communicators. Too many of them. Why should I go and add to them? If I go and add on to them, who will speak for the voiceless? I'm asking you if I go and add on to them, who will speak for the voiceless? Who will speak for the marginalized? Can the trot raw mate articulate his case so well that fuel prices are high? Or for example, Tewu and, and all those uh, uh, women who cook for our children in the schools, the pantry women, the watchmen, the cleaners and the rest who say they are going on strike because their uh, allowances have not come. Uh, can, for example, they articulate their case and would they be even heard? Would they be given a chance? They are the people we speak for. So our job as journalists is not to be an appendage of a regime. That's not our job. But occasionally, and I'll, I'll, I'll shock you before we get on. Oliver, give me that, um, what do you call it? Um, the, the screenshot from six years ago. Something I said about John Muhammad's government. And you always say, oh, I just started this because I hate Akufa. I don't hate President Akufa, though. Well, if I hate him, what happens? What do I get by hating him? I don't hate him. I keep, I've told you before that my father and President Akufa attended school at Row Road, what is now Kimbu Secondary School. He was one year behind my father. He used to come to our home to come and enjoy some. My uncle Marcus Hughes, I'm sure he knows him. He's late. So why would I hate him? I don't have to hate him. I'm just holding his feet to the fire to say, you promised to do A, B, C. You have not done that. This is me in six years ago when President Mahama was gov uh, in government. That's me. And I've not changed my DP since then because my father died in 2015, by the way. Watching my president, JDM, at the first ever accounting to the people. You remember that, that forum? Accounting to the people forum as he makes a new set of promises to compound the old ones that are begging for attention. I couldn't have asked for more. And then I laugh. I said, watching my president, JDM, at the first ever accounting to the people forum, as he makes a new set of promises to compound the old ones that are begging for attention. I couldn't have asked for more. And I made a similar comment after we did the results fair. You remember the MPP's results fair? And the, and the publishing of the website, uh, what do you call it, um, delivery.gov.gh and all of that. I made a similar comment. 
I know it will come up at some point. And me, I'm never scared of putting up things that I've written in the past. Because what I can't say to my mother and my father, I won't say publicly. That is why I will do Johnny's Bite. I'll speak for 30 minutes and not insult a single person. But you go, go and check the stream. They'll be insulting. They'll send them with 20 megabytes and 2 megabytes and 2 CD data and they'll be insulting people. Meanwhile, this morning, they don't know what they are eating. The person who has sent you to come and insult people is having, will have an English breakfast at a five-star hotel this morning before they go to work. You should be ashamed of yourself as a young person that fellow young people who are equally jobless as you are asking for jobs and your best bet is that you want to uh, ridicule them, insult them, and make public nonsense of yourself. You should be ashamed. If Kwame Nkrumah in 1947 and all the other uh, freedom fighters before that had, had done that kind of mediocre advocacy that you're doing now, do you think that would have had an independent Ghana from the white person? You should be ashamed of yourself. And you should trace your family roots and ask if your grandfather or your grandmother was equally a coward. I said this year, all young people must speak up. If you have a, a phone, an Android, iOS, whatever it is, you have it. Tweet, text, and tweet at those in authority. Tell them the problems in your communities. What puts me off is when we send young people to defend the defense. And when I say it, the young people come and they defend. I'll prove to you in a, in a second how they have done that. But all of us also show me a screenshot of the Minister for Roads. Recently, they say, oh, you never say anything nice about government. I'll show you something. When you do what is right, we will report it. When you do what is wrong, we will equally report it. We are not in your pocket. We won't be in your pocket. We are not. Oliver, pull it up for me quickly. That's it. Now, this is me from two years ago. 18 December 2019. I said, I salute the roads minister for cracking the whip and promising to go along the full chain of perpetrators to bring them to all to book. The impunity must stop at some point. He is my new darling. Hashtag critical thoughts. Hashtag Community Connect. And Community Connect is my program on radio. I started that in 2015, and that was why I was making all the statements you saw about President Mahama and the rest. So, again, I said, I salute the roads minister for cracking the whip and promising to go along the full chain of perpetrators to bring them all to book. The impunity must stop at some point. He is my new darling. Hashtag critical thoughts. Hashtag community connect. That's it. That's Kwekwa Makwata. He's the same man who I told, if you, who told us that if the roads are not, have not been done, we should hurry up. So if I praise him at one end and he has done something which is not right, for example, like asking for road tools to be abruptly uh, stopped because he feels so, when the finance minister told us that we will have to wait for parliamentary approval, even though we know that we agreed that in 2021, the uh, road tools, 38 of them, was, uh, was going to be a revenue line for us. Should I not talk about it? Because, and some of you are so funny. Go to my church, go to the Anglican church. Go to the AYPA. Go to the Service Guild. Go to anywhere I've been. This is how I've been since I was born. My bishop will tell you. Those are synod will tell you. Synod is the highest decision-making body of my church. They will tell you. Me, I will say it as it is. Whether you are my father or my I'll say because that was how I was brought up in the barracks. My father will call a meeting and ask us to speak. But you have to speak with civility. And that's all I do. You have to make your point. You, have, you can disagree without being disagreeable. Oliver, take me to Ponkatamansu. You remember what uh, they sent Mr. Dennis Miracles Abwaji to come and defend and say that, oh, whatever I spoke about at Ponkatamansu is not factual, is not balanced, is not accurate, da 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 They come here and say, it's not factual, it's not balanced, it's not accurate. We want to give you feedback. And then they go back and they start fixing the road. I will expose them this morning for you. Share the, what, share the hashtag. Share the first video for me. Play the first video. Pokatamansu right in front of the Michelle camp. This is how it looked like. This was what we reported last year. This was what we reported last year. The container office of the Pokatamansu uh, what you municipal assembly. This is the frontage, the Sabripo area, the uh, Mamisoja, all those areas. People go through this every time. Oliver, there are too many videos, so keep playing them. Find new videos and play them. This is the frontage. This is it. This was what it was then, how, what we reported.
And then they sent people to come and say, it is not true. It is not correct. It's not accurate. It's unbalanced. It's blah, 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 blah. The people are asking you whether that's the container of his post. That is the container office of the assembly. This is where they move from to go and take property rate, business operation permit, and all of that. Then they had the F entry after the people had co contributed 500 Ghana cities on their own per house to go and put a, a red notice in front of their homes to say that if they don't pay their property rates, they will come and sell their homes to defray their costs. And I ask which cost? Because the roads that you promised them, it will be the first year of roads, second year of roads, we'll construct concrete roads for them. Where are the roads? That's the question I asked. Are the roads there? Are these the roads you promised the people? Oliver, play another video. There are about six or so in them. Play them. Play, play all of them for them. Today they'll watch all the videos. This is, this is what people have to go through. So imagine if your vehicle is not as high as this one. You can imagine the repercussions. This was the situation. Come back to studio. This was the, the, the situation there. This was what I saw. Percy saw as well, and he recorded for us, and I went to record some as well. And we saw it. We put it out there. Then you heard them. They came to say, oh, it's a lie. It's inaccurate. It's unbalanced. It's not truthful. It's blah, 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 all of that. <clears throat> Yesterday, I spoke about young people. And I said, I am, not, I am not a campaigner for old people being employed while young people are unemployed. I said it yesterday. And I said that, rather, make the old people board chairman and make the young people CEOs and managing directors and let them guide them. I said that. And I mentioned names. I mentioned Okobo. I mentioned Kamal Dean. I mentioned Alfred Thompson. I mentioned the names. They are there, young people. Yesterday, I saw Obo as managing director of Ghana Post. So happy. I've seen engineer Ben Arthur at Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Beautiful. So why are you keeping 70-year-olds and 80-year-olds at, at post? What are they doing? They go to work to sleep. I have grandparents. I've had them before. They, they can't sit for more than four hours. They will sleep. So, Mr. President, we know they are your friends. We know they were there with you in the trenches when nobody cared. We know they have contributed to your campaign in the past. We know they are your paddy paddy. But please, we want development for our country, Ghana. Development like what the people of Pong Katamans were asking for. You have too many. When you said you had the men, I don't suppose you, you said you had, we have the old men. You said you have the men and the women. I don't see the need where somebody is on leave or says they are sick or they are not on, on fit for the job and then you keep the job for the person while another person is walking around who is competent, who can do the work. Why? Have they mortgaged the work for those people? Have you mortgaged the jobs for those people? Take me back to the progress work that has been done at Pong Katamanso. Well, just to place a record that they told us that what I reported from Pong Katamanso was a lie. Now this is it. What is supposed to be a lie is now being fixed. So can you fix a lie? You see the, you see the embarrassment? You said that this, what I put out there, the muddy, the muddy patch I put up there was a lie. Now you have put this up. Now you are going there to fix the problem. The problem that you say was non-existent. You're going back to fix them. So who are you? Who is the liar? And every liar is a thief. Who is the liar? Who is the liar now? Who, who is the liar? Because he said it didn't exist. Now you are fixing the problem. So who is the liar? And I'll tell you, I will report once I'm... And, and that's how my journalism has been like. I highlight a problem. You start fixing the problem. I keep up with you. Go and ask Coco Boy and his, the people at the Lekma place. That, that um, uh, um, Teshi Link Road. I spoke, that's it. That's the frontage. You see, they are fixing it. The same thing they called a lie, they are fixing it. This was later in December because you see the color of the Michelle camp, that's the, that's the frontage. Same place. What they called a lie is now being fixed. So who is the liar? And I say every liar is a thief. Every liar is a thief. What are, what, why do we do this to ourselves? And what, what hurts me is that I stand here campaign for young people to be given opportunities. And it is the young people who make a mess of themselves defending every kind of rubbish. This is the Michelle Camp, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the one BN headquarters. Now, this, you see the color has changed because it was Christmas, so they had to repaint from yellow to white and they designed it. But this is the patch of road I was talking about right in front of the assembly. 
So if it is a lie, show the old video, Oliver. If it is a lie that it never existed, that what I spoke about never existed, why are you fixing it? Why do we do this to ourselves? You said this is a lie. That it doesn't exist and that I am creating a false impression. That's what you said. That it is a lie. I create false impression. That is old school. Because if you want to attack the message, leave the message, attack the message. Because you can't find anything on me. Why well, they said first they said I smoke weed. Then they said, oh, wait, because I spoke about street children, I've given birth to children elsewhere that I'm not taking care of. Show the children, you can't show them. Then they said, I'm an NDC branch chairman. Bring my ID card, you can't bring it. Then they say, I go and take money from people. Show me the names and give me the amounts they give me and the dates you can't give me. So what, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Take me to La General Hospital. Let's leave this one because we, I'm happy that you are fixing it, Mr. Makwata and, and the assembly. But the point is that the people are not asking for you to come and just put gravels on it and level it. You promise them roads. At best, you promise them concrete roads. If you can't do concrete roads, do asphalted roads for them. They also deserve it. They pay the everything. So they also deserve it. So good morning to you. Kudos for this job done. And let it be on record that we never lied. Because we have showed you evidence that we haven't lied. In the coming days, I'll take you back to all the others we have spoken about. You saw the Jubilee Parks. We will show you what is happening now at those places. But take me to La General Hospital, Oliver. First, show me the screenshot. No, no, show me this one. Show me the screenshot of the president who is cutting sword for the La General Hospital project. Show me. Show me the president's screenshot. He cutting sword for the La General Hospital. And that's Amakwata. I praised him. Nobody saw it. When you praise them, they don't see it. When you criticize them, they are quick to see it. Now, this is the president of the republic. Bring it back, bring it back, Oliver. Okay, that's it. So, President Akufuado sought cash for 68 million euros La General Hospital redevelopment project. This is it. That's the master plan. The guy has a cane. Couldn't afford a pointer like me. <laughs> master plan of the La General Hospital. That's the president with his bodyguards. Of course, the health minister will be in there somewhere, I'm sure. In a very beautiful shirt. The President of the Republic, Nanado Danko Kukwa, cast the sword for the commencement of construction of the La General Hospital Redevelopment Project. Now, it, this was uh, done. We all clapped for it because for those of us who have lived in Accra all our lives, we know the essence of the La General Hospital. It takes some pressure off the 37 Military Hospital, the La Polyclinic, the Lekma Hospital, the Mana Mission Hospital, and all the other uh, ampi hospitals in that area. Rage, Kolebu, and the rest. So it, it's a big, it was a big deal for the people there. I used to go and buy coconut every afternoon at the junction where the La General Hospital was. A guy who sold very sweet coconut, I used to go and buy there and sometimes go and eat uh, on the beach and all of that. So I know the area very well. And I know how many people it served. Now... Kwekwajima Menu, our Honorable Minister for uh, Health and also the MP for Doma Central, had indicated at the vetting table that the project has started in earnest. He indicated that the project has started. Did he lie? I don't know. But yesterday we went there, and uh, we'll go back to yesterday, but before that, Oliver, I sent you the videos of the footage we took from last year. The bare floor, show us. So this was what was happening uh, uh, last year. And you know, a, a colleague of mine who works at uh, uh, Metro TV, uh, Mr. Jerry had gone there, and because he was in Kaftan, they had a very terrible interpreter who they mistook for a politician. So they thought government had sent him, and they opened the gates, and then the Chinese were leading him through, and he was filming the thing. This, that's supposed to be the interpreter. This is the, the, the place for La General Hospital. It used to be a very big place. At some point, it became a football park. Now, the question is that we are told that we are trying to modify the project and that the contractual sum is not enough and all of that. If you have ever built in this country, you know that once you go and acquire the land and you take your drawings and the quantities to the assembly for the permit, they will send a whole team to come and test the soil, to come and check whether the building you want to put on that piece of land will fit there. They will do all those studies before they come and give you approval to come and build. 
So one would, have, one would suppose that before the president went to launch or cut sword, all of that work would have been done. Oliver, there are too many videos. Play other ones. Don't play just this one. So what happened? Where is our sense of urgency? Because now yesterday, as you heard, Bella went there yesterday, and, and we'll play the full tape for you. Yesterday, as we went there, the people are complaining that there's pressure on them. The La Polyclinic has only four beds. And do you know how many cases they get every day? The hospital closes at 8 p.m. So what do they do at midnight if somebody has an attack? What do they do? If they have an emergency, what do they do? Where is our sense of agency? Where is it? Our sense of agency. Are we telling the people to go and die? Or what? Mr. President, you promised us better. Oh. And that's where, that's where the question comes. Because you, you promised us better. For example, why is the La General Hospital not part of Agenda 111? Why? Because you cut off for the La General Hospital and you told us that it will be done in, what, 24 months or so. Then you launched Agenda 111, cut off for Agenda 111, after you have spoken about uh, 88 hospitals. So why is the La General Hospital not part of Agenda 111? Is it not, top, is it not priority? The people of La, Teshi Nungwa Osu, who benefit from that hospital are they not priority what are we telling them i'm sure we can do better mr president if your minister for health is sleeping on the job show him the exit bring another vibrant man who can do the job and i don't believe i don't believe in the concept of he's my friend he's my friend i don't care who have you kept at the minister of ministry of health which one of them is a doctor which one of them understands public health you indicated to us in 2017, in January, that you were putting Mr. Kukwaji Mamenu there to fix the financial issues of the ministry. What is his scorecard? How much does NHIS owe? So, clearly, the man has not delivered as much as you want. And I have the video. I could play it for you now, sir. You don't need to keep your friends around you. Because your friends don't pay taxes like we pay. Your friends will pay their taxes. Yes, but we pay the taxes. And you came to beg us to vote for you. Who are you keeping at the Ministry of Health? Who? Check the ministries. Apart from the Finance Ministry, maybe the Education Ministry, Attorney General, and a few others. All the others are people who are not supposed to be there. They are people who are not supposed to be there. And it's painful. You complained about another person. So why are you doing even worse? Why? Why, sir? Why break your promise? Good morning.